Today I want to talk about the changes to lease accounting and why you should pay attention. However, before we get into that, I must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulation, we are not allowed to make recommendations and none of what follows should be considered as investment advice. However, if you're thinking about making an investment, we think you should bear in mind the following. Since January 2019, off-balance sheet leases have had to come on balance sheet, and this has given rise to the following changes. First of all, we see the appearance of right-to-use assets, which represent the value of the rented assets. Also, lease liabilities have come on and have been split into short and long-term liabilities. In the P&L, lease costs have come out of being a cost of goods sold and now split into a finance cost and a depreciation cost. This is lifting EBITDA. This has also had an impact on operating cash flow, but when you look at the business holistically, it's made absolutely no difference to the underlying operating performance. However, the change is giving management a great opportunity to talk about improving margins, even though, as I say, nothing's really changed. A good example of this is Rolls-Royce. They talk about operating profits being up 30%, but completely fail to notice that all of the improvement in margins is simply as a result of this change to lease accounting. The change is also allowing management to restructure their lease financing and boost future earnings. They do this by simply deciding that today's contracts are too expensive, take advantage of an onerous contract exemption and cut past profits. However, surprise, surprise, we don't expect them to downwardly adjust management compensation to take into account these new losses. The change is also allowing management to restructure the future cost of their current leases. They do this by deciding the leases are simply too expensive, take a charge against retained profits, and then by boost future earnings. However, surprise, surprise, we've seen little evidence of management cutting their compensation packages to adjust for the fact that they're now saying losses in the past were much higher than originally reported. The new standard was specifically designed to highlight to investors some of the liabilities that companies were taking on that had previously been left off balance sheet. The irony of all this is that a few companies like Lenovo and UPS have taken advantage of exemptions embedded in the standard to actually reduce the liabilities they report. They've done this by only including on the balance sheet the liabilities due to the fixed payments under the leases and excluding those that are based on revenue or usage. If they get away with this, we can expect that over time leasing contracts are going to start to change and reduce the fixed portion and increase the variable portion. The change is also impacting valuations. At first glance, when you use a simple enterprise value, i.e. marking cap and EV, the EV to EBITDA multiple is going to drop because the EBITDA rises. However, if people start to include lease liabilities in their EV, this will more than offset the drop and valuations will rise again. We think this is creating some investment opportunities because a lot of people's fundamental databases have yet to really be updated for the changes. And when we look across our valuation metrics, we see there's some complete anomalies, some companies that look very expensive based on the new changes and some that look quite cheap. One last thought. The accounting change has quite a big impact on lessees' accounts, but makes no difference to the underlying business operations. In contrast to lessors, it has minimal impact on the accounts, but we think over time could have quite a substantial impact on their operating business. We think several industries are going to be seriously impacted by this, and it's going to change quite dramatically their underlying operations. Telecoms Towers would be a good example, as would Vendor Finance. Now, if you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, if you want to keep up to date with our research, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time.